I, I came to Australia in 1950 and moved to Avalon Beach. And in 1956, Greg Knoll and Tom Zan visited our beach and sort of took off then. And we, there was nothing happening, so we were just young kids mucking around. So we just started fiddling around, making boards and things like that. And then I worked for Bill Wallace and learned how to shape and dial surfboards and then did, then just started doing my own boards. And in and, and that time, after I left school, there was a fairly consistent underground movement at Avalon. Avalon. So we just made boards and, you know. When we moved here, there was one set of lights on the Gold Coast. <laughs> and it was just a big country town. So it was hard. And then I had to work like in, in doing dishes and all that sort of stuff. And then slowly the surf, we, surfing took off a bit more and more and more and more. We could make money out of it. I guess young people are really concerned about where we're going. And it was the same in our generation, you know, it was that everyone was concerned about where where we're being led and what we're being fed, you know. And I think most probably what's happening globally right now is, is a good time for everyone to reassess what is actually going on. A lot of the surfboards, even though they're toxic, the biggest problem is our, the waste we have, the offcuts of the foam. Uh, the off the resin that's wasted, the glass that's wasted, all the waste that we have, right? So with it with an Aviso there is hardly any waste because there's no foam in it. The carbon's what's called pre-preg, that means the resin is in the carbon. They have no resin waste in the factory. The only way we can change surfing is to change the materials. And every so time you get a new material, you can change the, your perception of how you surf and how you make surfboards because it, the materials dominate what you do because how they behave. That is a woven material, right? That has, if you look at it, they've laid the, the carbon at 45 degrees. That means as it's weaving, as it's bending, it's got characteristics through twist and, re and reflex and the whole thing about these is the reflexes when you push into a turn and it comes back out it, it reflex like spring steel really quick and it doesn't lose its memory and it's so different to ride because they're hollow the feeling of the water going underneath is going through air so you, you're far more sensitive to the water than riding a urethane because the feeling of the water going through urethane is being dull going through foam. Surfing's really something special and we're losing that. If we don't keep our eye on the ball, we're going to lose it completely. If you analyse surfing, it's a very selfish sport, right? It's a very me, me, me thing, right? And that's also due to education programs that go to schools. They don't teach them to surf for fun. They teach them to surf in contests where we should be just teaching people to surf for the fun of it.